Hey everyone, welcome back. Brandon Bro here, and today we're gonna get started on part two of building a real life clap trap. So get excited, because we're about to begin. All right, so getting started on this project, I knew there was gonna be a couple of problem areas that I was going to have to address. The first one being is Claptrap's arms. And as you can see, Claptrap's arms are very skinny and yet very long. So that's gonna pose a problem because typically when you see a robotic arm, they're bulkier, they're bigger around, and that's due to the actuators and motors that have that torque to move those arms at the speed that's required for the application. Secondly is going to be the wheel. And Claptrap doesn't show any gears belts, chains, anything like that. So we're gonna to have to come up with something that was unique. Lastly, there is the fact that Claptrap only has one wheel. So that brings up the problem of balancing and turning. Now, I've got some ideas about that, but I'm gonna address that a little bit later. So if you have any ideas about how I could do that, go ahead and leave a comment down below and give me some ideas. The first thing I wanted to do though in this project is scale it so that I can find the appropriate parts and really that hub motor. What I started out doing was just doing a simple search for claptrap size. I came across this really neat forum where people were actually comparing claptrap to another character in the game. What I found was claptrap was approximately three feet tall, which works out really easy. It's an easy number to work with, so we can start scaling. Here in Fusion 360, all I'm doing is adding an image with side view. So importing it, and what's really cool is that you can do what's called calibrating. But before I do that, I'm gonna make this a little easier on myself and move the image to where it's a little more vertical, straight up and down. So here you can see me just move it a little bit, not quite exact, but close enough. And then here I am calibrating it and typing in 36 inches. So now we have the height. What we can do with this now is add a sketch to it, creating a circle then dimensioning that circle and seeing how big that wheel really would be if it was life size. We get 13 to 14 inches. That falls within a good number. From there, I'm adding another image, which is the front view. This will give us the width of the wheel. Once again, re resizing it, calibrating the image to 36 inches. All right, here we go. Let's just move that around a little bit just to line them up. Move it up. That looks pretty good. So we'll go ahead and add another sketch. And this one's really easy because it's just a rectangle. We can dimension that real quick and we get about seven and a half inches. So hopping on over to Google real quick, just typing in 13 by seven hub motor, you can see that we get a bunch of different varieties, different widths, different diameters. And that's really good. We have a variety, but we're looking for something wide. And that became a challenge. Here you can see that we are running into e-scooters and e-bikes. And after a little bit of research, I came across these and ultimately led me to this one here, which is 15 inches, or at least it says it is. If we scroll down a little bit further, you can see that says 34 centimeters, which actually equals out to about 13 inches, which is perfect for application. But what really drew me to this particular hub motor was the tire size. This tire size is very common. You can go to your local Walmart, your tractor supply, and get this wheel because it goes on lawnmowers, it goes on tractors, it goes on go-karts. So having that versatility, that availability was really, really important for me. All right. So now we have our hub motor selected. We don't know exactly how big it is going to be when we get it in, because at the top it says 15 inches, and a little bit further down it says 13. So we'll have to figure that out as far as scaling goes in the future, but we can move forward with how we're gonna control that motor. And your typical ESC won't be able to handle this motor, mainly because of the voltage, but also because of the switching back and forth. To get our robot or any typical balancing robot to work, you need to be able to go back and forth fairly rapidly. And one thing that regular EACs can't do is exactly that. So I had to do some research and one thing that I came across was a brushless DC controller called the O-Drive. 
Now, this controller is really nice because it has a higher voltage range, which is great considering the voltage that was required for our motor, but also the different ways that we could talk with it. It even says Arduino, PWM, so we have a bunch of different ways that we can communicate and control our motor, which is great. All right, so at this point, we've already decided not only the hub motor that we're gonna use, but also the controller that we're gonna use. And I waited a while to get them both and I ended up getting the O drive in much sooner than the hub motor because it was coming from much further away. But in the meantime, I wanted to experiment with the O drive. So I found someone locally and bought a used uh, hoverboard. <laughs> yes, the one that you stand on and if you're anything like me, you fall off from it a few times. The reason why I bought it though is because hoverboards utilize not only a hub motor, but they use the same kind of encoder that the larger motor utilizes, which is a Hall effect sensor. Now, an interesting aspect of the O drive is that it doesn't have the proper filtering for a Hall effect sensor. So once I got my O drive in, I had to actually fabricate that. And here is the O drive. And I made a little case for it, 3D printed it. But you'll notice up here, there is a board with some capacitors on it and what that does is it just filters the signal and the ground. Now I also have a power lead, um, a resistor, a couple of other things, but I have the entire O drive and I was able to experiment with it a little bit to get the hoverboard motor working so that when I got the larger one I kind of had an idea what I was going to do. All right, in the moment you've been waiting for, that's right, the hub motor. This thing is incredibly massive. <laughs> I was very impressed with how big this was. This is by far the largest motor I've ever dealt with, or at least electronically. And once I got it in, I went ahead and spliced in some ESC wires and the Hall Effect sensor connector. And this will be Claptrap's wheel. <laughs> Pretty awesome. All right, that's gonna do it for today, guys. Thank you for joining me. And if you're interested in that O-Drive case, I'm gonna put a link down in the bottom. There's a link to Thingiverse. That's where I posted the STL file. So you're more than welcome to 3D print it if you happen to grab an O-Drive for yourself. Until next time, take care.